so hello everyone if i'm audible please type y in the comments okay so so this is the last uh, topic that we are covering in this course again it will be very relaxed like yesterday on uh, automatic speech recognition or uh, large vocabulary uh, automatic speech recognition this is going to be you could say large vocabulary text to speech synthesis or tts system so this is the final part speech synthesis or text to speech synthesis so there are lots of things here each of them could actually you can take uh, maybe even a one year course on speech synthesis alone i'm not going to focus so much on it it will be very uh, over the top very relaxed overview of that so we had gone through large vocabulary asr yesterday so i hope you watched this microsoft india uh, video lecture a video presentation or whatever seminar it was i thought it was a very good uh, very good uh, lecture or video for a large audience means uh, for a general audience who does not have much uh, knowledge about speech processing at all so anyhow so this is where we are now text to speech system our goal is to convert text to speech i am sure sometimes you have heard uh, go, uh, seen videos in youtube where uh, instead of uh, uh, our natural uh, person speaking a robot kind of voices on the background so generally this uh, you will find that people who feel that uh, they do uh, their pronunciation is uh, not up to the mark or they have uh, accent kind of they have an influence of accent then they will use in youtube this kind of uh, tts setup to use a robotic male or female voice the goal of tts however is to change from this robotic kind of voice which sounds unnatural to a kind of very very natural kind of voice so this is are related to in some ways the development of general ai so the more we are able to uh, the better we are able to do speech recognition and uh, on uh, the opposite text to speech we are indirectly i would say going towards the development of a uh, general ai so whatever the progress we have in speech technology it will definitely boost uh the advancement of general ai anyhow so these are the things that are important there is one thing which when you give input text you have to do some analysis on the text before the speech synthesizer can be used actually if you remember the source filter theory uh, if you can actually produce sounds based on a source filter theory. source filter theory you have three four parameters for example if you want to produce a vowel sound then you could give a particular pitch frequency pitch frequency if you give around 100 hertz it will be sounding like a male voice if it is around 200 hertz it will be sounding like a female voice then you could give uh, you know the vowel triangle from the vowel triangle and other analysis of the formants where generally they lie in the spectrum you could give some bandwidth and frequency resonant frequency and resonant bandwidth you can input into the source filter theory equation and then you could actually produce vowel sounds so similarly you could uh, probably produce to a far lesser accuracy consonant sounds so that primitive way of text to speech synthesis is always in our hands but of course that is not what we are going for but before that you have a text as i said whatever is written in english or even any other language most languages that is does not correspond to the sounds that are produced so if you have a text every word 
it has to be broken up again into its phonetic constituents. And then you can think about uh, what is called converting into speech. But there are other ways also. But text analysis is kind of this making it possible. This is a process of uh, converting the text into a form which can be then used to produce sounds. So there are a uh, few things that uh, text synthesis does. See, the first one is pronunciation of the text string that I have just spoken. Decide on the set of phonemes that is to be spoken. Degree of stress at various points in speaking. Intonation of speech and duration. These are all related to uh, this dynamic uh, variations or the uh, speech being a random signal kind of. So if you have a text, from that text you must be able to determine its sentiment. This is also called sentiment detection. It always happens. Uh, uh, this comes under all this speech, pro, uh, automatic speech recognition and TTS comes under, if I say a wide range uh, of applications, they are all um, comes and they all come under what is called as natural language processing. Word processing or text processing also comes. This is kind of text processing. Sentiment analysis from a particular text. You all must have heard about hate speech detection and all that. Kind of forensic analysis in some way. Anyhow, then you see syntactic structure. That means where to place pauses during speech. What is the rate of speaking most appropriate for the material being spoken, which is like sentiment analysis. How much emphasis should be given to individual words and phrases? All this has to be extracted from the text, all this information, so that it can be incorporated into the speech synthesis machine. So semantic focus and ambiguity resolution. This means the text analysis process must resolve homographs, words that are spelled alike but can be pronounced differently depending on context. So there are many, many words like that in English. So actually, it comes on uh, some nouns can also be uh, become verbs. And then uh, when a noun becomes a verb or vice versa, the way you speak it, it differs. So even the spectrogram will differ. You can see it. Yeah, and how to best pronounce names and foreign words and phrases. So all this, this entire thing is to convert the text into a form, which is then is, can be then converted by a machine into speech. So this is the more detailed version of what happens in basic text processing. At this point, I want to mention, please remember yesterday uh, when we are uh, discussing about LVASR, Large Vocabulary Automatic Speech Recognition, all the material I took from uh, well, this, I think the last chapter of the book, few pages of that book by Rabinar, Speech Recognition by Rabinar. I think you have access to that book already yesterday for Large Vocabulary uh, Automatic Speech Recognition. And this, whatever few slides I am talking about today, it is going to be some introduction to digital speech pausing. I think it is also by Rabinar or uh, Anyhow, so uh, I, I think you also have access to this book, Introduction to Digital Speech Processing. This text to speech synthesis uh, chapter is there, which will be uh, useful for uh, what is called when you revise this. So let's go through this. Uh, this is the Uh, structure we are saying, talking about components of text analysis. So basic text processing. 
document structure detection, text normalization, linguistic analysis. Let's go through all this. Then there is phonetic analysis. That is prosodic analysis. Let's go through all these three steps basically, and there are multiple steps within this. So, so uh, next, first of all, so document structure detection here in basic text processing. First point is document structure detection. So, what happens here? The document structure detection module is to determine the location of all punctuation marks in the text and to decide their significance with respect to the sentence and paragraph structure of the input text. So, uh, while writing, when we are, uh, let's take the other way around, when we are speaking, we are, when we are uh, encoding speech in terms of symbols, which we call as written text. To incorporate all the information that we are delivering through speech, we need all these punctuation marks and uh, grammatical constraints, let's say. And this has to be, again, when you are trying to reconvert this text to speech, this has to be, again, I think, removed, so to say, because these punctuation marks or exclamation marks or this uh, all other question marks and all this they provide the information whether it is a statement or it's a question or whether it is a what is called uh, somebody is really excited this kind of uh, tags could be associated with it but it does not provide any meaning to what the sentence is uh, you cannot convert this into words so you have to get rid of uh, those unnecessary things so that is called that falls under doc document structure detection so you have to tag different parts of the sentences different parts of the text and remove all these unnecessary quotations and so on and so forth uh, unnecessary punctuation marks and quotations and so on and so forth then text normalization so there are lots of problems here uh, which uh, text normalization tries to achieve. See here, for example, how to handle abbreviations and acronyms. So, DEC, generally people do not pronounce it, people will pronounce it as DEC. Similarly, this, there's an example here 1920, not 1920. Similarly, strings and all. So, in our, uh, again, this example of our uh, uh, short forms like Mr. and all that, Mr. Doctor, whatever short forms we use. So this is an example that uh, whatever shorthand notations we are using, you have to reconvert it back to into a full form so that then we can convert it into a phonetic form. So that comes under text normalization. There are many other things here, of course. This, but this is a basic. The third part here is linguistic analysis. So once you have converted, it got rid of all the punctuation marks, tagged them according to their, uh, let's say, sentiments, then you can do these parts of speech of the word, which uh, uh, word, uh, is, is, whether a particular word is noun, verb, adjective, whatever. So, because based on that, the stress and em emotion, not emotion, uh, how you uh, speak the sentence, obviously noun and verbs, you probably give more stress. There is more loudness, you can say, in these words, they are more important compared to, let's say, adjectives and uh, other parts of speech so that is necessary and there are other things here apart from parts of speech tagging so many other things are here if you work in the field you will uh, know about them but let's say parts of speech is the main thing that is being done in linguistic analysis then you have the second part which we call phon phonetic analysis which we, this is phonetic analysis so basic text processing is done. Now we have phonetic analysis. So yeah, so to convert the sequence of 
uh, the record the, the, is to be the text that we have the text that we get after basic text processing now we are to convert it into we have to correspond the text basically find a mapping between the text and the corresponding phones and in that you should incorporate the manner of speaking locally and globally speaking style from the text you have to decipher this information homomorphic disambiguation these are different components of uh, this uh, phonetic analysis part to resolve the correct pronunciation of each word in the input string that has more than one pronunciation then letter to sound so this is also called grapheme to phoneme you can say a particular letter is a grapheme and then or maybe uh, you may not have a particular letter as a grapheme maybe you have a syllable means a combination of verb and consonant kind of that is a syllable so it may be syllable to phoneme is possible but whatever it is units of written symbols you have to convert into phones or map into phones then you have this prosodic analysis prosodic analysis is see the sequence uh, see their the sequence of speech sounds their durations and the associated pitch say so, uh, all sounds even though we isolate the uh, no let's so let's not say even though let's say that uh, the different speech sounds that are available let's say in english depending on the context you see they will not be of the same duration for different words the duration of those uh, uh, those uh, the duration of those uh, phonemes will be different so based on the speech sentence you will have to adjust the duration of those phonemes you have to incorporate those information then we have pitch pitch is generally as as i have said it is a uh, it is a marker or biometric of a person but we are a dynamic system and you will never it will never happen that the pitch will be exactly same all the time there will be minute or some finite variation uh, when we speak from different uh, for different words or wherever we are affected by different emotions and stress and all that so that pitch contour means from what to what how the pitch is minutely varying that information you have to incorporate this is called as prosodic analysis so that all this is necessary so that we can uh, we can finally uh, get a speech sound uh, or we are able to convert the text into a natural sounding speech signal so next is this evolution of speech synthesis systems Yes, uh, this, as I said, there is a lot of things here to uh, go through. But I would say, I told, uh, I think, a few minutes ago, that even the simple source filter theory can be used to produce some vowel sounds at least. It will sound robotic, but you can distinguish between the five vowels. Now, the next step was something called concatenative speech synthesis, where uh, you see this unit selection synthesis. So what it is, is it's, uh, uh, it's called uh, this formant synthesis, by the way. This is the very simple form based on source filter theory that I was talking about. Now, unit selection synthesis is, it was, uh, it's like, different speech sounds you just store it when people are speaking people are reading text and on for different words different speech sounds see every speech sound or phoneme has a context the context is determined by the phoneme before it and after it generally so thousands and thousands of these combinations of speech sounds we stored it, we create a database of it. And then when we have this basic text processing, 
when we have this basic text processing available to us we have this uh, uh, text to phoneme labeling done we just take all those phonemes depending on what the context and just concatenate at uh, stack one uh, one after the other as necessary and that's basically unit selection synthesis of course there are many variations of that but this is the principal idea of course this is not a very mathematical or very engineering way to do things so we then develop this probabilistic way of doing this using hmms and now we do hybrid kind of systems with hmm and neural networks so those are quite complicated as you might understand so we'll not go through all that but i would like you to have a good overview of uh, good but simple overview of what TTS systems are so what I will do uh, again I have a very good lecture here I would want you to watch this is the YouTube link I'm giving you. It's a wonderful, uh, just as good as the video I shared yesterday. It's a wonderful uh, video about overall view of the text-to-speech systems and how it came about and uh, so on and so forth. Please watch this lecture in your own uh, free time and the time that is available now. Uh, it will be useful for you in the very long run. So that's it please give your attendances at the end of the uh, lecture uh, at 10 45 and uh, please watch this video tomorrow we'll uh, just wrap up the course have a brief overview of all the things thank you